Hello my friends, we are here today at Riverbend. We are now looking for wild leeks. It's that beautiful time of year where you have all of the trilliums in bloom as well as wild leeks. So right down here by my basket are wild leeks. You can tell that they are wild leeks over trillium very easily. First of all, they smell like onion. Second of all, the trillium itself usually has three leaves. Like that one is a beautiful red one. And this one here has the three leaves plus the flower. And these are very different leaves in terms of the structure, but they do often grow together. You'll want to make sure that you have boots on to make sure that you are not coming against any uh, of the ticks that are out there right now. And then look at this beautiful flower. It's really cool. So we'll be digging these up. They are prolific in this area. I have been nurturing this whole uh, forest full of them. I only take a little bit out of each clump. So in a clump this size here, I will take no more than about 10 stalks. And then I will move to another spot and find uh, some more. And I just make sure that I am going through the forest and never really taking too much in any one area. You can see it's quite abundant. What you can't see are the copious amounts of black flies that are around me as I film this. That is the miracle of the wild leeks and why they actually stick around for so long because you have to really want them because you're out here with the black flies and you have to determine that this is something that you want to take home and enjoy. So with my little shovel right now, I dug out just four. The ground is extremely dry this year, so I was able to just sort of shake off the dirt. I will put the shovel away and press that back down with my foot so it looks like nobody has been here. So after I have just put my foot back on it, I will put some leaves back on so that that area can grow. I only took a small little clump from that one spot and now I'll move like another 10 feet. Also be mindful, you don't want to really dig where you have a beautiful clump of trilliums. You want to let them naturalize as well. So I do try to find spots where they are very healthy, the wild leeks, where they're very healthy and away from the trilliums. But this place is also filled with rocks. So it's sometimes quite difficult to get the ones that you want versus the ones that nature will give you. In all the years that I've been doing this, I have never seen so many trilliums. It's absolutely blanketed in these white ones. Not a lot of red ones this year. I've only seen two, but oh my goodness. It is making it very hard to find clumps of the wild leeks. Find one right here without a lot of trilliums in them. So beautiful. Except for the bugs, of course. So here's an example of uh, pulling them out. You can see how much dirt is actually left on them. I shake all of that dirt off and I use my hands to get it off but I just leave it here in the forest. There's no point in bringing it up to the house. There's no, uh, There might be bugs or um, there's other healthy microbes that need to stay here in the forest. Hey everyone, this is the gear that you wear while you're out. You have to have gloves on. You need a hat that covers your face with uh, black fly netting. And I even usually have my hood up to try to make sure that those black flies can't get up my ears. It's a miserable job, but the rewards are lovely. So I'm closer to the water now. And down here at the river's edge, I just get the leeks. I don't get the trilliums because there are no overhead trees. So they're a little easier to harvest. You can see it's quite abundant, but there's the forest. It's not a big piece that I'm harvesting, but to give you an idea, I have only in that big forest there that I showed you before, I've only harvested that much. And then I'll take just a little bit down here. I really go by the philosophy of I can always come back and get more, but I'm not going to harvest more than we will eat. And I do share this with my dad and a girlfriend who also loves them. So there is a beautiful red trillium. It's out in the open, getting a lot of sun. But it's just lovely. Here's what we've got. Look at that abundance. I think I'm going to call it a day. 
I actually have a fair bit that I'll be able to share, clean up and share. The bulbs are very tiny right now. Uh, they do get bigger as the season progresses, but then the leaves get a little bit less desirable to eat. So it's a bit of a balance trying to decide when you want to get them. They are coming out extremely easy because the soil is so dry. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. And then maybe next week after an entire week of rain, they'll be a little bit easier to get out, but also bigger bulbs. They just need to rest. It's, uh, I don't want to disturb the soil too much. This is a toad lily. They usually only have one bloom per plant. Look how pretty that is. Can I show you the bloom? It's very lovely. And the leaves sort of look toadish. But look at, there's another one right there too, hiding. Now I'm sure some of you thought I was carrying this basket just because it was nice looking. But I do want to say I use it every year for this particular project. And it's because I can clean them right in the basket. And because of the weave, uh, everything drops out, including the dirt. If you don't happen to have a pretty basket, you can still do it all outside. Just lay them out like this, take your hose, use the pressure from the hose to clean as much as you can. One of the things you wanna make sure that you remove is this little piece, this little casing that sits around the actual uh, base of the wild leaf. This part will make them go funky when you put them in a cup. So you do wanna clean off all of that stuff before you bring them inside. Um, it's gonna save you a lot of work. As long as the bugs aren't too bad and it's not too cold out, uh, it's best to just try to clean these up outside and get them uh, looking good. When I bring them inside, I separate them all and do one final clean so that they are good to go and ready to eat. I am a believer of the concept of when food is ready to eat, you will use it if it takes a lot of prep work afterwards. Uh, before you can enjoy it, you probably won't use it. So what I'll do is I'll lift up each one individually and then once it's clean, I will put it here in the basket. Uh, don't be afraid that if you ended up with a couple of ones without a bulb at the end, those can still be used. They can just be chopped up and used like with the greens uh, from a green onion. So here they are, all nice and cleaned. I usually bring them in and do one more cleaning in the kitchen where it's a little bit warmer and less bugs. Note the pile of debris that's come off from them. I walk back to the forest and put that right back where the other ones are all growing. Uh, there's all sorts of root matter in there. And I just figured that that's part of the sustainability of harvesting these beautiful wild leeks. I can't wait to drop them off to my dad and my girlfriend. We all love them. And that's the most important part. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along. We'd love to have you for this wonderful journey as we adventure into homesteading and all different things that have to do with the beauty of food and nature and how it all comes together to build a beautiful, fulfilling life. Take care, everyone.